Today I'm going to um, introduce um, the lowland biota in Taiwan. Uh, when I, what I said about lowland, it's, um, it's kind of uh, artificial, uh, arbitrary um, definition. Um, um, but uh, in this case, um, I'm mostly talking about um, the, the plants and animals and uh, under the altitude of 1,000 or 1,500 1, meters. This is a topology of um, Taiwan, and you, as we can see here, um, uh, it was covered by um, uh, green only the mountain part, and but the, on the low end side is uh, mostly the uh, discolored, which means that it is heavily disturbed by human activities. And so um, today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, the low end vegetation mostly, but uh, um, and uh, I'm not going to talk m too much about the, uh, the, uh, the fauna because we'll have another uh, lecture uh, focused on fauna. So today uh, and the next lecture, I'm going to fo focus mostly on the plant side uh, uh, of the biota and also introduce some of the environments um, uh, of, of Taiwan. And on this picture, um, I'm showing the, um, the vegetation map of Taiwan and using different color f uh, to represent the, the, the different vegetation. And uh, as we can see here, uh, the lower part of the, the color um, are mostly secondary forest plantations and uh, a little bit of the seashores and mangrove um, as well. And the upper part are um, some of the uh, more uh, native vegetation like the, the alpine or the, the, uh, the conifer zones. But today I'm going to not go too much about that, but focus on the lowland, which means uh, uh, lower than 1,000 or 1,500 meters in altitude, uh, which comprises of the, uh, the ficus maculus and a little bit of, of uh, uh, Machilas castanopsis uh, uh, forest in this case. And on this slide, uh, as we can see, a lot of the uh, on the west coast uh, or the west side of the island are um, in the light yellow or um, uh, uh, light, um, light yellow or the orange and a little bit of the blue. And those are uh, all um, secondary forest plantation. So we, as we can imagine, the majority of the lowland in Taiwan are um, uh, has some influence uh, from human, and therefore uh, the native vegetation are not um, uh, do not really exist in, in a large pad in a large patch, but uh, rather there are small patches um, uh, on the, for example, some on some of the east coast and also on the south coast of uh, um, uh, of Taiwan. And you can see some of the still um, remain the, the native forest of the, the lowland vegetation. And um, I'm going to uh, start with the seashore uh, in Taiwan, and we'll move on a little bit to the to the other lowland area uh, in Taiwan later on. So uh, let let me first introduce the seashores. And uh, well, Taiwan's an island; it's all surrounded by um, ocean, but we can roughly uh, divide it. Um, the seashore into four different parts because uh, it represents some of the different habitat and different uh, base of the, uh, um, uh, the in, in geology. And so the first part is the north and northeastern uh, seashore. It's uh, from uh, Gongliao to Danshui. Uh, so it covers um, a, a lot of the, uh, the rock formation and also is heavily influenced by the north, northeastern uh, monsoon. And so the uh, vegetation is very different uh, from the other side as well. So it's mostly sea cliffs and sea uh, eroded platforms and tofu rock and so on. And we'll have some of, some of the pictures later. And the second will be the west coast, which is the, uh, uh, quite long uh, on the west, west side from Danshui to Fangliao. And um, for the uh, about 400 kilometer region, uh, they are rock, uh, almost all uh, sandy area, and it's uh, uh, some of them uh, uh, have uh, lagoons, and also we uh, still have some mangrove remains on the west coast. And the, s the third part is the east coast, which is from Gongliao to Dao uh, in Taidong, which is the longest part um, in, in this uh, classification, uh, about roughly about almost seven hundred kilometers. 
and uh, it is uh, because it's uh, really stiff on, on the east, east side so there are a lot of cliffs and also uh, uh, because the, uh, the rock base is different it's limestone and so we do have uh, uh, some of the spatial um, um, vegetation on, on east side especially in, in Hualien area and the last part will be the southern part. Uh, the south coast uh, will be from Fang Liao to Da Wu, Taidong. And this part is mostly um, based on coral reef and rice and coral reef uh, structure. And so, and also because it's on the south tip of Taiwan, it is uh, uh, much, much warmer uh, than the other region. So um, we have uh, some uh, very, very nice uh, subtropical to tropical um, coast forests in this region. And uh, let, let's uh, see some of the photos uh, on this uh, coast, coastal area. And the first is uh, from, uh, from Yelio. It's at the uh, northeast coast and it's one of the very famous uh, spot for tourists and to see geological formation. And you can see the, the rock is um, uh, have, have this uh, um, angular uh, plate and um, and you, you can see on the far end, uh, you can see some of the, the tofu rock formation, uh, rock erosion type. And uh, so on this area, um, because it's uh, quite, um, quite a lot of cliff, and so we will see the vegetation and, and quite windy. So the vegetation here is, uh, is more, um, is, uh, the trees are not very tall, maybe uh, five meters tall investment. Um, but mostly just uh, small shrubs and some of the herbaceous species. And this slide shows the He Ping Dao in Jilong area. And this uh, basically gives you a, a rough idea about um, what is a little bit uh, further um, off the seashore. You can see some of the, uh, uh, the trees on, on, the, on the very top end. And that is um, um, uh, a little bit taller than the, the, the front one. And you can see some of the um, the, the other um, uh, uh, on the former side. You can see a lot of the grasses, and uh, some a, a lot of uh, some of them might be is Kansas in, in this case. And this is uh, the typical seashore type. So if we divide divided the vegetation type uh, along the um, the gradient from the from sea to the a little bit inland, we can roughly um, divide into several different categories from the, um, uh, the very shallow um, uh, coastal region uh, or intertidal region. And the next will be um, uh, mangrove, if there's any mangrove uh, vegetation here. And then there's uh, some uh, herbaceous or the, the shops area. And then we'll have a little bit uh, taller, like the coastal forest. And then we'll have the, um, some of the, uh, the more typical lowland uh, vegetation type. And this kind of gradient is uh, mostly based on several factors. Uh, one is, um, of course, the, the, the uh, salinity, the, the salt concentration. And uh, when it's um, closer to the ocean, the plants need to uh, tolerate you know, the higher salt. And, uh, and second, there will be, uh, of course, some of the, um, uh, the, the waves, uh, the ocean waves, and will influence um, and bring, uh, of course, again, the, uh, the higher salt concentration. And uh, the, the soil base it will be a little bit uh, different, but it's not a limiting factor um, uh, in this case. So I'm going to show you some uh, photos we, we can, uh, we'll be seeing uh, the things we can see from the seashore. And the first one is the beach cabbage. And it is uh, a small shrubish and to uh, sometimes it's large shrub. Um, and it is a uh, has very beautiful flower, and the flower is kind of uh, peculiar in a sense is that um, there are five petals um, as we can see on the slide, but the five petals are only one on one side, and because um, it is um, the original flower is uh, five and and is two like, uh, but there is a slit uh, on one of the uh, the the lobe, and it will become. Uh, uh, open up of the flower, you're becoming uh, like the five petals only on one side. And on the other side will be um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the pistil, the, uh, the female structure uh, on the other side. So um, the flower um, will, will become uh, asymmet asymmetrical, uh, asymmetrical 
uh, uh, flower like bilateral means that uh, it uh, can be divided into two mirror uh, image side. And it is um, believed to facilitate uh, a pollinator to recognize uh, where to, to land the flower and, and then to pollinate um, the, the flower. And um, next, you are uh, very likely to see uh, a very common plant, uh, Ipomia pescapri uh, brasiliensis. And you can see uh, from the name itself that this species uh, is originally described from Brazil. And in fact, it's all, all over the world. You can see it everywhere. You can see on the, almost all the Pacific Islands and it's growing um, a, a very dominant in, in the seashore area. But it has a very beautiful flower and it's from the, uh, the morning glory family. You can see uh, the Ipomia flower um, in typ uh, typically. And the leaf is, is like a, a, a whole sedo. So it's, it's the name came from. And also, you're uh, likely to see um, uh, this plant. It's called poison bob, and it's uh, not only it's uh, native to here. It's uh, you can see from um, a lot of countries in East Asia to Sri Lanka, and um, and it is also um, uh, widely cultivated uh, as an ornamental plant um, in Taiwan as well. So sometimes you will see uh, even um, on on campus you can see this plant. And uh, it contains an uh, alkaloid, uh, so it will cause diarrhea. That's uh, how the, the name was ca came from. This poison bug means that it's, uh, if you um, accidentally eat the, uh, the plant, you might uh, have some trouble. But I don't think you'll have much chance to eat the plants anyway. But the uh, Aboriginal people, um, like Paiwan and Amis people, um, they will use this uh, to, for the cutting and snake bites treatment. So um, it has some of the uh, side effects, but um, it can uh, be used as medicine too. And there is a uh, um, little tiny feta you are very likely to run into uh, when you go to seashore. Is this wolf roach, and um, uh, the the scientific name for uh, this thing is uh, Legia exotica. And so from the species uh, epithet exotica, it means the exotic. It's um, is uh, actually it's uh, kind of invasive everywhere, so um, it's uh, you can find this thing um, uh, all over the world uh, too. Although it's called roach, but it is um, not really related to a cockroach at all. Because if you count the the number of the legs it has, uh, it's more than six. Because cockroach has only six le six legs, but uh, this is more than that. So, and uh, because it is um, in in fact it's uh, another uh, different class of uh, invertebrate. Next, we move on to the west coast, and as um, I just briefly mentioned, uh, most of the west coast are um, heavily influenced by human activities, and a lot of uh, the lands are uh, become industrial industrial area or the the farming area, and some of the uh, area are typical like this one, and this is uh, Wang Gong at Zhanghua area in the middle part of Taiwan. And this is uh, uh, right now uh, uh, when the picture was taken, it was at a low tide, so you will see some of the um, uh, the the landy area on on, on the seashore. Um, if you have a, another closer look, you will see um, this uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, cluster things um, uh, uh, lying on the ground, and it is uh, oyster farming, and. Um, Oyster farming is uh, quite popular um, uh, in the middle part of Taiwan and some other area down south. And also there are some clam farm and on the seashore or some of the uh, other fishes too. So this is kind of a typical um, aquatic farming area um, on, the, on the west coast. And, um, uh, and because of that, not much really left uh, except for some of the, the things we just introduced. Uh, uh, early on. And in other areas uh, will typically look like this. This is from uh, Yunlin Zhuosui Xi area. And the, it is um, uh, 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 on the river bank and you will see a lot of Miss Kansas uh, uh, flowering on, on this picture. And um, a lot of the lowland were uh, kind of uh, um, wasteland uh, style. 
and uh, it was some of them were uh, uh, abandoned farms and some of them were uh, eroded uh, heavily uh, by the floodings and but uh, nonetheless um, uh, there are still uh, some some plants but mostly uh, some of the invasive plants you can find and some native plants still uh, exist but not much and uh, not much animals or in, uh, in this case you will be able to see in the lowland and um, but uh, we sh uh, still can see some of the birds and I think the birds is probably the uh, the main uh, things and, and more exci most exciting thing you can see in the lowland. We do have uh, a lot of migrating birds and also uh, nesting birds or um, uh, the birds who uh, only live, uh, live in Taiwan. And so here are some of the examples you it's very commonly seen uh, in, in this uh, lowland area. Uh, this is the, the cattle aggregate and um, it's, uh, uh, it's very commonly found in uh, lowland also um, in, in farm, farmer, uh, farm farms and some uh, in the river banks too. This is very common. And the next is a uh, uh, black crown night heron. And this is uh, one of the very common thing you can also see um, uh, inside the Taipei city or uh, in any of the, some of the uh, city parks. And even in NTU uh, campus, you, you sometimes you will spot it. Uh, uh, this bird, um, especially um, in, the in the evening. And in fact, this picture was taken uh, downstairs uh, in the ecological park. And many of the water birds you can see uh, are, are shown in this picture. Um, the the Kentish proper, the common kingfish on the, lo uh, on the lower left, and the teal, um, and a lot of different kind of ducks. Uh, you, you should be able to find it. Um, uh, on this uh, lowland area. But one of the most precious things you can see uh, on, the, on the west side of the seashore uh, is the mangroves. And mangroves is uh, very unique in, in their uh, overall habitat uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's usually um, grow, um, uh, it's a special vegetation grow uh, on, the, uh, on the river mouth and in and, uh, and, and the, and the ocean. So uh, the plant itself needs to tolerate the, um, the fluctuation of the salt concentration uh, constantly, almost every, uh, well, every day. So uh, when it's high tide, the salt concentration will uh, rise. And when it's low tide, uh, we'll have more um, uh, fresh water from the river. So um, uh, the, the salt concentration is, is much lower. And uh, not Many uh, plants can actually tolerate those kind of um, uh, physiological change, and that is uh, how this uh, mangrove vegetation was uh, so special. And this is a picture showing the uh, the mangrove distribution all over the world, and um, uh, all the, uh, the the dark green um, area are uh, are the the area we can find the mangroves, and. Um, Taiwan on, on the far right end is one of the area with the northern, almost the northern boundary for the main group distribution. And, um, and this picture uh, actually showing the, uh, the main group lost uh, um, during the past 20 and, or 30 years uh, in, in the world. And Asia is uh, one of the major country to have this kind of uh, main group lost. Uh, of course, mostly due to the, the human um, disturbance. And this picture is showing uh, the, uh, the mangroves in Taiwan and um, there are over 20 spots uh, of mangroves you can find in Taiwan and uh, uh, all of them are on the west coast uh, of Taiwan. And the total area of the mangroves uh, near uh, 300 hectares and uh, we have uh, some of the mangrove trees um, uh, documented before, uh, we have totally f uh, six different mangrove trees um, uh, in the record, but two of them already went extinct. And we, we know that because we have a uh, specimen record and somebody uh, 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 know that before. And those two uh, species, uh, although it's di di uh, extinct from Taiwan, they still exist in some other area like in the Duke or in, uh, uh, in Southeast Asia. Um, 
uh, the first two are the one uh, the ones who uh, went extinct, the Bugueria and Seriaps. And we still have four um, different uh, mangrove trees in Taiwan. Um, the, the most common thing you can find on the north side of Taiwan is Candelia obovata. And uh, this, this um, Candelia tree, uh, in Chinese we call Shui Bi Zai, or the water pen. And it's because it's uh, uh, viviparous, and um, in its uh, fruit. Uh, viviparous means that it has its fruit uh, mature, and, and it will stay on the mother tree for, for, for a while. And it uh, the embryo inside will keep growing and growing. So it will, uh, the fruit will elongate a little bit uh, to a certain point, um, and then uh, the whole thing will drop. And um, the elongated fruit or embryo, um, it's like a pen, and so that's we, how we call um, it's water pen. And the whole thing will uh, drop on, on this uh, muddy area of the mangrove, and will stick to the mangroves and, uh, and, and then become a, a, a new tree like the, the one show on the lower, lower, right, uh, lower left, I mean, upper left. And um, the original name of the, uh, the water pen in Taiwan is called Candelia Kendo, um, but it has been um, studied in detail um, a couple of years ago um, by a professor, uh, uh, Chou Longxu, um, or one of my colleagues, and she found out that um, it's actually not the one uh, the one in Taiwan is not the same with the name of Candelia Candle uh, found in Southeast Asia. And uh, so she uh, established a new name for uh, the one found in Taiwan and also in the uh, uh, southern part of China and renamed it as Candelia Obovada. So it was just published a couple of years ago. In the mangrove area, we um, not only can see these uh, special mangrove trees, we can also see uh, some of the uh, uh, interesting um, uh, 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 crabs, uh, they call the fiddle crabs. The fiddle crabs has uh, one of the, its arms is enlarged and is used to, to fighting, and the smaller um, arm will use uh, uh, to um, to feed. And it's uh, quite common on those kind of mangrove area. It's very easy to 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 be spotted, and it's also uh, one of the major food. Uh, consumed by the, the water birds. And this is a, a picture um, uh, from area, uh, it's an area view um, to see the Tanshui River mouth and, and also the, the mangroves um, on the Tanshui River mouth. And uh, on the middle of the, the picture uh, showing the dark green area, um, uh, quite large on, on, on this one, they are all uh, comprises uh, of this mangrove tree, the Candelia um, Obovada, we just mentioned, and, and this is uh, uh, one of the largest patch in, in Taiwan, and um, right now it's uh, it's protected. So um, and originally it's it's a little bit smaller um, uh, than this picture. Right now it's quite quite large and um, and more and more uh, trees growing um, due to the the preservation, and uh, this is in the Guandu area and also. In, uh, in on on the other side of the river uh, in Bali, also you can see some of the individuals uh, as well. Now let's um, uh, move on to the east coast of Taiwan, and which, in my opinion, is the most beautiful beautiful parts of Taiwan. And this picture is uh, was taken in Qingshui, Hualien, um, uh, on north of Hualien and, and south of Yilan. And this is a, a very famous um, road, um, Su Hua Gong Lu. Um, this is, uh, uh, as you can see on the picture, um, on the, in, the, in the middle, you will see a, a line just uh, a cut cr across the, uh, the mountains. And on the east, this is kind of a typical, uh, typical site for um, uh, on the east coast that uh, the mountain is quite steep and directly into the ocean. Um, it's, it's particularly so um, uh, uh, on the boundary of the um, at the boundary of Yilan and Hualien, and this is uh, also um, uh, has the limestone formation on, on this area. 
I will show uh, some additional um, picture from Hualien. This is a uh, Talaco Gorge and uh, from uh, Talaco National Park. Um, in this area, you, you can see some of the roads is also uh, cut across the, uh, the mountains like this one. And uh, because it's a limestone formation, so there are uh, some vegetation is quite unique to this area. But we still can see a lot of uh, lowland um, plants. It's, the, it's commonly uh, uh, present. It's the same as the other part of Taiwan too. And here is another shot from Taloko area. And um, uh, since the mountain is very steep, um, or the, uh, the gorge uh, or the village um, uh, so so steep, and um, you don't really see a lot of uh, the big trees um, growing uh, going uh, near this region, but they are uh, trying to climb up uh, on the, on a very steep cliff, and um, and a lot of uh, ambitious uh, plants you can find as well. And here is another shot um, to showing the uh, the color of the water, and um, and because it's limestone uh, formation, so you will see uh, the the soil base is um, kind of basic, uh, which means that it's uh, the pH value uh, is a bit higher, so um, only the plants can tolerate those um, uh, soil base can uh, can um, can grow on this damp uh, limestone area. And here um, uh, I want to show some of the common plants, um, not only in uh, East Coast but in all over the uh, Taiwan. It's uh, something is worth mentioning is the paper mulberry. And this is a uh, um, dioecious plant, which means that uh, it has a male and female plant, uh, plants. And this is a female one. And in uh, the reddish part is the fruit, um, and it's really tasty. Um, uh, not only the birds like it, I like it too. It's very sweet, and but it's a uh, uh, you cannot uh, eat it or buy it from the market because it's uh, too soft to be um, to be to be sold in the market. You only can uh, see and eat it uh, for a while. And pepper mulberry is uh, another interesting plant in that, um, as the name apply, um, it was. Uh, uh, the bark was was one of the source to make the paper, and not only the to make a uh, paper, but also sometimes some Aboriginal people they used to make the cloth, and um, you can use that to um, to uh, to make some other things as well. And um, some researchers um, uh, use this uh, to as an indicator for uh, how uh, the Aboriginal people migrate from one side to another. Because this is one kind of plant, they will bring it uh, with them when they uh, move from one side to another. And uh, uh, some researchers are uh, trying to study the uh, disp dispersal pattern and um, by those Aboriginal people and by tracing the, the, the phylogenetic history of this paper mulberry. And uh, there are um, uh, some evidence showing that uh, so the Pacific uh, people, um, they uh, very likely uh, bring this uh, paper mulberry from the South Southeast Asia and uh, even from South Asia uh, and bring this plant with them to uh, uh, to migrate to the Pacific. And here is uh, one of the example that is uh, adapted to the limestone base area. There's the Taloko oak and um, this plant is only found in Taloko area and uh, it's different from the uh, the other uh, oak species in Taiwan. Um, the last part of the coastal uh, area in Taiwan is the southern part, and um, it is uh, one of the very few coastal forests left in, in Taiwan area. Um, if you go to Kanding or um, uh, the nearby region, you can see some of the coastal forest. And also, they, um, you can see some of the red coral forest, uh, which means that uh, it's roughly about um, 20 to 50 meter uh, in, in altitude, so it's a little bit uh, higher um, than the, uh, the, the um, coastal region. But it's, um, it's formed by the coral reef uh, before the rock. And so the forest growing on, on, on that part is, uh, uh, is a little bit different from um, the other region in that the base is different. And there are two famous uh, coral reef forests in Taiwan. 
uh, both of them are on the southern uh, south side, and uh, uh, one is in Kaohsiung, uh, Caishan. Uh, the altitude is about three hundred and sixty, and the other is uh, Hengchun, Kenting. Its uh, altitude is uh, a little bit lower than three hundred meter. And here, I like to show you some pic some uh, picture of plants you can see in those uh, kind of coastal forest area. The first one is Barantonia racemosa. And this is a, a very beautiful plant and it's a very long inflorescence uh, hanging down from the tree and uh, it flowers only uh, in the evening and at night so um, uh, so but it, when it flowers it uh, has a lot of flowers uh, flowering at the same time for one inflorescence it, it's, it would uh, like a, a shining stars um, uh, uh, during the night um, but if you want to see the flower, um, you have to probably um, go out about nine o'clock or so, and to um, to see it. And right now, Barantonia is commonly cultivated um, in many areas, and uh, particularly in in NTU campus, you should be able to see it um, uh, in many other uh, many spots, like in uh, ec uh, ecological palm uh, downstairs. And also um, uh, in the uh, uh, Fu Yuan, um, in the, at the entrance of NTU campus, and there are several other uh, regions too. But um, the uh, the um, the flowers of Barantonia is uh, likely pollinated by um, either uh, bats or uh, the large moth. And there are some controversial data anyway, but um, uh, it's uh, has been documented that. I, um, these two things are likely the, uh, the major pollinators. And this one is a Terminaria catapa. It's a, it's a big tree it's a, uh, with a large leaf. And um, it's also uh, quite commonly cultivated. Um, you can see on NTU campus too. Um, and this picture showing the, the flower. And the flower uh, is, a, is a mixture of uh, male and female and bisexual flowers um, over here. And next is uh, Hernandia uh, nymphifolia. It's a it's a big tree, and it can grow up to probably ten meters. Uh, and the picture, uh, the thing you see um, on the picture are the fruits of uh, Hernandia. And the fruit uh, has a white part. It's uh, actually a, a enlarged receptacle, and this is uh, to facilitate the, the the ocean dispersal. We'll uh, mention it a little bit later on. And um, it's you can only see it in the south southern part of Taiwan, but nowhere else. And on the coastal region, you can also see this uh, uh, Tenefortia uh, argentia. Um, it is a uh, kind of a shrubish like um, thing. It can grow on uh, on a coral reef, and but it can grow on a little bit sandy area. And it's not restricted to um, southern part of Taiwan, but you can find on the east coast and. Um, in, in other area of Taiwan as well. And it has a very tiny flowers and um, uh, some people call the uh, inflorescence like a caterpillar um, running. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, for the plants in uh, the rice coral reef, um, you sh uh, should be see uh, several um, species like uh, Bistrophia, uh, Dreteris, uh, and those things, uh, or uh, the Ficus. And those things are uh, it's uh, not uh, it's commonly found in the rest coral reef, but it's uh, but you still can find in some other regions um, uh, in, in Taiwan as well. So next, one, I will show you some of the picture for uh, the the species I mentioned here. The the first one is uh, Palaquin uh, from is um is is adapted to the warmer area, uh, so it's mostly found on the southern part and. On the right, that's uh, that is a fruit, and this is a uh, Ficus benjamina, and this is uh, or we call it the the white fig, and uh, we uh, have a l quite a lot of uh, fig species in Taiwan, uh, roughly over uh, 20, 26 to twenty eight species, uh, in total. Uh, a few only a few of them are endemic, but most of them are not. You can f uh, also find in Southeast Asia as well. And um, in, in the fig trees in Taiwan, it's very common to see those uh, supporting uh, root and uh, growing from the top of the trees um, to the bottom. And 
uh, especially in the southern part of Taiwan when uh, it's warmer and more humid and um, uh, this uh, white fig uh, will grow um, uh, kind of uh, naturally and then to have a, a new root uh, attached to the ground uh, and attached to the ground and, and in some cases you will see um, a kind of uh, uh, white fig forest uh, growing in a certain area but actually that's from only from one tree and this is uh, very common uh, uh, they seen in, in Taiwan and a lot of the the ocean forest or even as um, a lot of plants um, in, in the, uh, the ocean area or seashore area in Taiwan are uh, disturbed uh, di uh, dispersed um, by the, uh, the ocean drift fruit or ocean drift seeds and those um, uh, because the, uh, the, the current uh, of the ocean are uh, on the east side of the Taiwan is from south to, um, to north and so we'll expect a lot of uh, um, components of um, uh, southern tip of Taiwan um, ha are the same as the uh, like the Philippines and so on and this is a picture I took in the Philippines actually in the northern Luzon and we can see uh, the three different uh, fruit um, uh, floating on uh, on this uh, little little uh, petal um, near the near the seashore, and and these are uh, the coconut, the biggest one, and the second one is a barringtonia, and uh, the the very tiny little one is a daris, is kind of legume, uh, a liana of legume, and those three. Um, we don't really have a coconut on, on the seizure, I, uh, which I will um, think is uh, it's not because it couldn't be in Taiwan, but it uh, has been shot down uh, by human uh, before, um, because it's, I think coconut should be dispersed um, very easily uh, to Taiwan, but um, uh, right now we can only find some of the cultivated species um, of palms in Taiwan but not a native one but um uh I th uh but in the, for the other two cases the Barringtonia and Darius we, we can see um in Taiwan so it's uh, the, the the common species the same species we can find in Taiwan as well so um we will see this uh the the, the ocean drift uh fruit uh, can bring um those fruits from uh, for long distance and this is one of the evidence to say that. And I'd like to spend a little bit of time uh, to introduce a very special island. Um, it's uh, offshore of Taiwan. It's a small island called Oki Island, or we call it Lan Yu. It's on the uh, uh, south seas uh, of Taiwan. It's a small island uh, I circle on a map. And this is an island uh, with, uh, uh, it's kind of unique because um, it the, the the habitat, the environment, and also the vegetation, it's much more uh, tropical-like and uh, compared to um, uh, Taiwan, and and this is one of the the only area with uh, some of the the true tropical elements um, of plants uh, can be found in Taiwan, and also the vegetation on this island is uh, is very similar to the ones uh, in the northern Philippines, but not so uh, compared to. Um, Taiwan. So if you look at a book of like the Flora of Taiwan and you will see a lot of plants we will see okay only found in Lan Yu, only found in Lan Yu, but also found in, uh, in the Philippines and so it's, it's kind of unique in, in um, its uh, nature habitat and, and uh, also some of the, the insects and animals and Lan Yu is also famous for another reason it's uh, the home for uh, uh, one of the uh, Aboriginal tribe, uh, Yami, and it is uh, famous for uh, uh, many of the the well uh, remained um, uh, culture, and it is the boat uh, they they made um, traditionally made for um, uh, for uh, setting out to catch the uh, for the fishing. And uh, the uh, Aboriginal Yemi is, uh, I think, is the uh, the only tribe which still remain a certain degree of uh, authentic culture uh, compared to the other uh, twelve or thirteen recognized uh, Aboriginal tribes in Taiwan. It's, uh, I think, 
the main reason is that it's separate from uh, the mainland of Taiwan, and um, so uh, the other tribes in Taiwan they are heavily influenced by the uh, the interactions with other uh, Han people or the other people. Um, but uh, in in Yemi is uh, is isolated in a sense that um, they they are uh, still have um, um, some of the the remain the original uh, lifestyle. And this is a picture I took a couple of years ago um, with my students um, to Lan Yu, and they are holding a, a pandanus fruit. And um, although this species is commonly found in, in Taiwan as well, I just uh, found it uh, uh, very um, interesting. And we uh, we also test uh, a little bit about this uh, pandanus fruit. It's it's quite tasty, and it's it's like eating. Um, pineapple or the breadfruit actually. Okay. Although Lanyu is quite small, but there are uh, several small lakes um, in, in Lanyu, and this is uh, the most famous one, Tian Shi, and this is uh, also a, a sacred place uh, for the Aboriginal people here, but um, you know, also it's a very nice spot to see the vegetation, and you can see um, in, in Lanyu area, uh, the trees uh, also grow very uh, tightly, uh, to get together, um, and and so it's it's kind of very difficult to cut through um the forest here, and it's a kind of similar situation uh in the Nanran Shan uh, in the uh, southern part of Taiwan too, they have a uh, uh, similar vegetation type that um uh, the tree stand uh, are very dense densely uh, together, and um is also highly influenced by uh by wind. And to um, so that the vegetation is uh, never be able to reach a very um, uh, high, um, uh, cannot be very tall for for the trees, uh, except for some of the um, the, the valleys uh, or the river banks. Lanyu is also home for uh, many of the unique plants, and uh, one of the very important one is uh, um, the butterfly orchid, uh, Phalaenopsis aphrodite. And this is uh, uh, originally found in Lanyu, but right now you really cannot see it for a while um, uh, because it's uh, oh, a lot of them has been collected. Uh, but right now this plant has been widely cultivated in Taiwan, so uh, and also uh, new hybrids has been made. And but this is the uh, the the original place um, for this plant uh, was found. And over here, you can also see uh, some of the unique plants, um, like uh, the Epipogian uh, Rosian on the, on the left, and uh, and also the Sigifia um, Afikiana. And those two plants are um, are uh, we call it a micro um, heterotrophic plants. That means that it cannot uh, have the uh, photosynthesis ability. Uh, and re really have to re rely on the uh, the fungi to um, grow uh, on a base and to survive. And those plants are a kind of tiny and not very easy to to be spotted. And the epipodium, uh, the orchid on the left, is a bit uh, larger, like the fifteen centimeters. But the things on the right, that's really tiny. It's uh, the individual is maybe only five or six centimeters tall. And although it's uh, uh, the picture might look large, but uh, it's very uh, difficult to to spot the plants if you you are uh, not experienced um, to 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 see it. And I feel I'm very lucky um, to to take this picture, and um, uh, because we are uh, um, seriously search for those kind of plants um, uh, in in the field, and and it's it's very. Hard, as you can see, it's uh, the same color as the background. And uh, in Lanyu, you can f also find some very interesting plant uh, only found in tropical um, region. Uh, this is an example, um, Kagayang nutmeg. And uh, nutmeg is a very important spice. And, um, and nutmeg and maize are both from this nutmeg, nutmeg tree, and um, meristica. And it's uh, originally well. The spice is uh, is uh, very famous from the spice islands, the Moluccas, and which is uh, a very important um, has very important commercial values uh, during like uh, from 
uh, 15th centuries uh, to 17th centuries, and and uh, there are a lot of um, uh, um, Europeans uh, want to have this spice in uh, from Southeast Asia and import it back for, uh, to Europe, and so it become um, very valuable. And but this is a kind of tropical element from uh, for uh, this uh, mystica uh, the nutmeg. And in Taiwan, we only can find uh, the the trees in in Lanyu, and although it's right now it's cultivated uh, in some other place too, but it's only native uh, over there. Uh, the picture on the right is uh, the picture showing the nutmeg uh, fruit and was cutting open, and in the middle uh, brown thing is the seed and um, is covered by uh, this uh, aerial. Um, uh, of the reddish things, and the reddish thing is uh, the, the the source for uh, making maize, and the commercial uh, maize is uh, you can find it in, in, in on the market, and although it's not that common um, in in uh, uh, in Chinese cuisine, but it's uh, you will find it's it's more popular um, for the European uh, or Westerners somehow. Another example showing the, uh, the affinity of um, Lanyu's uh, flora in the Philippines is an example of Olex imbricata, and it is um, actually a parasitic plant um, growing uh, on, on top of some, uh, it's a root parasite uh, on some other plants. And it is the flower, um, it's quite, quite beautiful actually. It's a small, uh, sharp thing. And it's uh, only found in in Lanyu, and also it could be found in uh, in the Philippines too, and only uh, a few individuals can be found in Lanyu actually. And uh, a very famous butterfly uh, was found in Lanyu is the uh, uh, the Maglin, uh, bird wing, and it's uh, one of the largest um, uh, butterflies uh, you can see in Taiwan area, and and. And this butterfly can be found in uh, Lanyu or Oki Island and the Philippines too, and he has a very uh, beautiful um, yellow spot on on the on the lower uh, lower wing, and it's a picture on, on the upper right. And um, the the caterpillar of this butterfly is is quite big, and um, this is almost um, uh, uh, it's it's uh, in its largest form, and it's about um. I think uh, fifteen centimeters long. It's um, and when it's disturbed, it will like many other uh, similar butterflies. It will have these uh, uh, things to uh, spray out and and have a very, very good smell actually um, to uh, warm the uh, the enemies. Okay, so we have finished the uh, the introduction of the coastal region, and we will uh, kind of move. A little bit inland to the other regions, and in fact, this is probably not a uh, good picture uh, to use as an introduction. It's um, it's Jilong Mountain, and it's in Jiufen, um, and Jingguashi area, and the whole mountain was totally deforested um, because uh, uh, due to the the mining um, in the early days, and so uh, all the trees has been cut down and uh, to mine the gold. And to uh, trying to search for the gold, and uh, in fact, there are still some people trying to um, uh, dig out the gold uh, in this region, but not anymore. It's it's a uh, yes, you uh, it's been popular for uh, some time, but um, many of the the houses and uh, the mining area was was abandoned uh, a while ago, and but nonetheless, uh, we can still see some of the. Uh, the uh, remain vegetations uh, uh, along the uh, um, the region, and one of the um, and and one the other spot is in Yaming Mountain, and it is uh, also a little bit different from the other part of the uh, uh, country. Is that uh, the vegetation in Yaming Shan is uh, a little bit different? I'll probably talk a little bit about the uh, uh, the special form uh, on, on the other lecture. And in in Yaming Shan region, is uh, has it's is special is because it's volcanic uh, base, so um, it has uh, um, uh, still have some of the uh, hot spring and, and not uh, leaving a volcano, 
um, uh, in, in Yamushan. And so in this region, the, uh, um, the overall uh, vegetation um, surrounding those hot springs is a bit different from the others. That is, um, the, the plants need to tolerate the, uh, the sulfur uh, in the soil. And um, also, um, the, the, the soil um, is a little bit um, acidic, and which means the, the pH value is a bit lower. Um, so um, many of the, the, the plants are, has to adapt to the, the, the spatial soil base. And here are some of the, uh, um, the, the plants um, you might be able to see uh, a little bit inland. It's, um, it's a member of a Pacey. Um, it's uh, very close to Rhododendron or um, uh, the Azadia. It's um, Paris Taiwanensis. And uh, this plant, um, we call it the, uh, the Taiwanese uh, um, drunken horse. And which means that uh, um, if the horse eat uh, the plant, it will become drunken. And, and that's because it is a little bit toxic and, and can cause some trouble um, uh, for, to the body. Although the, uh, many of the lowland area has been um, heavily um, uh, influenced by human, but if you go a little bit inland um, to, to, to the mountain uh, in some of, like this is uh, from Logging, um, Shui Tian Logging Trail in Xinzhu, and you will st still be able to see many of the native plants in a um, very nice view, and uh, this is kind of foggy uh, a little bit, and uh, a lot of uh, very nice plants and, and uh, nice vegetation uh, in this region. And one of the dominant species um, in uh, this uh, lowland uh, area is the red machilus. And machilus is a genus of uh, several different plants and um, it's from the, the family Lauresi. Um, uh, a lot of uh, members from this family are uh, distributing, uh, distributed in this uh, kind of uh, climatic zone. And um, there are quite a lot of species in Taiwan, and this one is uh, one of the most commonly seen uh, in Taiwan and also in East Asia, uh, from sea level to about 2,000 uh, meters high. And the, the name, we uh, call it red machilus, also we call it a pigfeet machilus. And the, the name of the pigfeet is came from um, the, the newly formed bud and the deep part of this um, the tree, uh, when it was enlarged, is uh, is the the bracket is reddish, so it's uh, it's like a pig feet uh, in a sense. It's a kind of a pointed uh, to the top, and so that's how the name was uh, originally from. This red machilus also have uh, uh, another interesting feature is that it's um, um, it, the flower is dichogamy which means that uh, it has uh, uh, the, the male and female organ uh, mature at a different time. The, the male organ of a, of a flower is the stamen, the female organ is the, the pistil. And um, uh, we can see on the picture here, um, uh, on, it was taken um, uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. And we'll see two different kind of flower form uh, in, on, on um, for uh, the flowers of this red machilus. And on the left, that's, uh, uh, we call it a female face, is, is because uh, it, it has, uh, the, the pistil is already mature and ready to accept the pollens. And, but um, the, the stamen is still unopened uh, in, in this face. But in some flowers, um, it's become the male face is uh, um, uh, the stamen, uh, was, the anther was open and the pollen was, was uh, time to spray out. So and at the same time there are two different kind of flowers and the purpose is to um, prevent the, uh, uh, the cell pollinated, uh, pollination which uh, because uh, in plants they do not want their pollens to deposit their own pollen into the pistil. And uh, in using this kind of uh, spatial mechanism, you can assure that uh, the pollen can be carried out to another flower. 
And here is uh, another print, um, Chinese mulberry. It's, uh, it's from, uh, the name is Morris Australis, and this is a, a print with, uh, um, uh, with the, which the silk was made from. And, um, uh, and also um, we use that um, uh, the fruit, the mature fruit is quite tasty on the mulberry. It's, uh, and uh, it's very commonly seen in Taiwan. It's, uh, um, the picture showing here is, uh, is uh, the fruit, um, the immature fruit. And but when it's mature, it becomes purple and it's really tasty. And um, the next is a uh, milk fig tree. It's uh, one of the very common fig uh, in, in lowland Taiwan. And uh, the leaf is, uh, has a corded base, which means that it's uh, like a heart in, uh, on its base. And um, the leaf is a little bit like a papaya um, fruit, actually. And um, uh, we call it milk fig tree. It's probably due to um, the, the, the milk from, from the, the tree set. But it, but actually, uh, all of the figs uh, have this whitish uh, milk thing um, uh, uh, for his sap. So I uh, I'm not quite sure what his name was came from. And uh, the next is uh, one of kind of interesting tree um, I'd like to introduce is the round leaf chicken shi tree. It's uh, the translation uh, was direct, directly from the Chinese name the ji shi shu. And um, it is a member of the coffee uh, coffee family, and um, although uh, it may sound very um, stinky uh, for this tree, but actually no, and um, you don't really smell anything uh, from from the tree, uh, La Sciences. and in fact uh, the flowers of this uh, chicken strip tree is very beautiful, and it is a close up of the uh, the flower. And um, it has a uh, very a lot of hairs uh, on 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 the top of the the petal, and it's it's totally whitish and uh, it's uh, um, it's kind of transparent um, looking in of this flower. In uh, in the wetter area, it's uh, also uh, one of the very common uh, plants uh, to see is the Asian tallow, uh, alocasia or dora. And this plant is, is uh, actually um, also cultivated in, in several places, including downstairs. And um, uh, this is uh, the fruit, a uh, reddish fruit uh, of, of the uh, Asian taro. And if you um, take a look of its uh, flower, it has a very typical um, uh, Aaron family flower in, in that it has a, a, a big black um, uh, covering uh, inflorescence. And the uh, inflorescence comprises uh, a lot of uh, small male and female flowers. And the male flowers is on the top of the inflorescence, and the female flowers uh, are at the base of the inflorescence. And um, I kind of cut it open and to let you see the, uh, the interior of this uh, the, the break. And um, the female flowers are um, uh, the little uh, roundish uh, things, the green things on the photo. And all the flowers are reduced to um, the single organ and without any parents, without any petal or, or sepal uh, in this case. Uh, although the name is uh, taro, but it's only referred to um, it's, uh, it's one of the relative um, to the, the taro we eat. And you cannot eat this species at all. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of poisonous and because the uh, the the root contain a lot of alkaloid um, in, in in inside, and it could cause uh, heavy diarrhea. And here is another example for um uh, for the um Fagesi tree, and um this called Sacralanopsis um, paculoma is one of the many uh, members um, of Fagesi you can find in Taiwan, and uh, it has a very uh, peculiar uh, acorn in uh, in a, a cup uh, cup structure um, uh, you can see on the picture and in the middle that's the uh, um, the, the fruits yeah. also uh, in in springtime you will see uh, some of the in, uh, very beautiful flowers and like the Chinese hydrangea on this picture and uh, the hydrangea has a uh, two different kind of flowers and one is the uh, 
the normal flowers, uh, the, the fertile flowers in the middle of the inflorescence, and also the uh, the ones which is showy, like the the one with big white thing, and the the white thing is actually the in large sepal in this case, and is uh, uh, the purpose of course is again uh, to attract the pollinators, and using a similar strategy is another plant called uh, Mosaida formosana. And this plant uh, has an enlarged uh, sepal, but the shape looks like a leaf. And so uh, that's uh, how the, the, the Chinese can, name came from, the, uh, the whitish leaf and the golden flower. And, um, but it's actually not a leaf, it's an enlarged sepal in this case. And it's also commonly found um, on the roadside um, in the, the middle and the southern part of Taiwan. And uh, this is another picture of uh, one of my favorite, and uh, um, the herb Paris, our Paris polyphyla. And um, it is uh, from the lily fam original lily family. Right now, it's another uh, family, Malanthiaceae. And um, it has a very beautiful um, inflorescent, uh, in in beautiful flower. And um, the bigger uh, green thing are the bracts of the flower. And the actual uh, petal or parents are the very thin, uh, uh, thread-like thing um, on, on the picture. And you can uh, see it um, uh, on the roadside or on the story of the forest. Okay. And um, in Taiwan, we do have a lot of ferns. And, um, but, and I only show in the, uh, one of the, the big uh, tree ferns uh, you can see in Taiwan. And we have a lot of tree ferns in, um, in the northern Taiwan, especially in the wet area. And uh, people use that um, to, um, to, uh, to cut out this um, uh, arrow um, uh, uh, stem area and to use that as a base to, um, uh, to uh, cultivate uh, like orchid or some other epiphytes. And this is um, uh, kind of a, a economical use in, uh, um, and, and export it to uh, other regions as well. And this picture of orchids, um, well, it's just kind of fun. It's uh, because it's uh, one of uh, my students' uh, research topic. It's a uh, rice bupophyllum. And it's, uh, the, the flower itself is, is not that big. It's not as you can imagine from the, the picture. Um, uh, but it's, uh, um, uh, it's 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 kind of rare, but it's uh, one of um, uh, 400, 500 species of, uh, species of orchids you can find in Taiwan, and uh, uh, indeed uh, there are um, it's the diversity of orchids are, are quite high in, in, in Taiwan, and um, it's a uh, and also a, a big um, uh, market um, available um, for cultivation. Okay, so at the end, I would like to show you uh, just a little um, uh, glimpse of uh, some uh, other insects and animals uh, you can find in the lowland. And this is, uh, we do have a lot of different butterflies, but I showed this uh, paper kite. It's uh, one of the butterflies that's very easy to observe. It's because it's fly very slowly. And you, if you go to the field and see this, it's uh, you only uh, doing this, 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 and not very uh, fast. So, uh, very easy to catch or um, to observe it. And so that's why uh, there's a common name in Taiwan. We call it a big dumb butterfly, and uh, and and the species uh, not only can be found in Taiwan, and and it can be found in Southeast Asia as well. But um, this is one of the things uh, you can easily uh, uh, encounter. And there are a lot of insects you can actually find in Taiwan, but I'm not going to talk about that. And uh, we will have a special tour to um, the insect um, uh, museum in the Forest Institute and to see much, much more uh, introduction uh, of the insects in Taiwan. So um, here I just show you one of the uh, become vast in a sense. It's uh, the blister beetle. And it's everywhere. Uh, it's uh, and it can eat up uh, a lot of uh, the plants if they they are abundant. And here is uh, also a very common thing you can see in the field. It's a uh, the uh, the elegant filing skink. Uh, 
um, it, it has a very beautiful um, uh, blue tail, um, a very easy to spot. Um, and it has a very interesting behavior in that um, the female will protect the, the eggs and um, after uh, she uh, lays the egg. And it's quite uncommon in, uh, compared to the other reptiles in Taiwan. And next, um, this is uh, one example of, uh, for the, uh, a lot of amphibians in Taiwan, it's a rice frog. Uh, it's pretty common um, in, in the lowland area. And um, uh, uh, on the distribution map on the right, you can see the, the, red, uh, the green spots, uh, those uh, area uh, has been reported to find this rice frog. It's basically all over Taiwan, you know, the, the lowland area. And, um, uh, and here is uh, another example for uh, the, the, the birds, commonly found birds in, in Taiwan. And that's the, the bubio. And the, the bubo, um, can, there are two species of bubo in, in Taiwan. It's called the Chinese bubo, and the other is Taiwan bubo. It's uh, uh, the uh, endemic or the subspecies, sometimes subspecies of, uh, of this bird. Uh, and the Chinese bubo is found in the, uh, on the west, west coast and also the north coast. And uh, the Taiwan bubo is found in the east and the south part of Taiwan. And there are um, a little bit of overlap in the distribution. And some people say there's some hybridization uh, uh, can be found, but um, basically they, uh, they are kind of d distinct in, in the, the east and the west coast. So um, overall, we have um, uh, introduced uh, some of the lowland area of Taiwan, but in fact, if you, uh, you live in Taipei City, you are probably um, the, uh, the most thing you can see from, from, um, from the lowland is uh, we call it a concrete forest and a lot of buildings and uh, this is uh, the view from Taipei City. You can see Taipei 101 on the right and um, uh, most of the lowland uh, has been destroyed and, uh, and because of that uh, a lot of um, uh, native plants and animals was disappeared in, in lowland region. And here is uh, the example of, um, of the Formos and Sika beer. And um, it was uh, reported uh, commonly found in the we uh, western part of Taiwan, and um, in the riverbank or in uh, in some of the other uh, shrubby area. And it's an uh, endemic subspecies, and but it was extinct uh, for a while, around 1970s. And but um, there was some effort to um, uh, to uh, reintroduce um, uh, this, uh, the Sika deer uh, at the southern Taiwan. And currently, um, in, a, in a while, uh, they have uh, released uh, the Sika deer into the wild and it appeared to be quite successful. And um, well, this picture was taken in the zoo anyway. But it's uh, really unfortunately that um, uh, the lowland uh, vegetation was heavily um, uh, disturb and this is a, a kind of typical view uh, of the uh, the lowland um, Taiwan uh, in uh, in the middle and south Taiwan and this is from uh, Jiayi area. You can see the whole mountain hill was uh, cut down. The tree has been cut down mostly and uh, replaced by uh, patches of um, uh, the crops or uh, bing lang the betel nuts and and many others and there are only a very few tiny patches uh, the, the deep green in this case um, still remain uh, as a secondary forest. And as the, uh, the agriculture is very important, uh, the crops or um, the rice field in, in Taiwan is, uh, um, is, is a major component uh, for uh, the agriculture. The, um, the lowland area uh, in Taiwan, especially on the west, west coast, west side, um, is probably never be able to restore um, uh, to the original uh, type. But nonetheless, it's, uh, um, we hope uh, the disturbance will not enlarge um, to the other part of the region. It's uh, um, the thing we are going to introduce on the next lecture on the middle and, and the higher uh, that, uh, altitude of Taiwan.
So uh, this concludes um, yeah, the lecture of today, and um, we um, kind of give you a, a brief introduction for uh, the lowland and uh, the current situation uh, um, of vegetation of Taiwan, and a little bit about the information um, of um, the, the fauna. But we'll have uh, hopefully have uh, another uh, some other lecture to cover that part. Mm -hmm. So see ya.